What are we doing today, Liv? We're modernizing the lifestyle, of course. And by modernizing, we mean modernizing. So come along with us for the journey. Yeah, <laughs> can't, um, can't do all that. Guys, welcome back to the Swing Hub podcast. I'm Gage. I'm Olivia. And today we have a special guest that I am super excited about. Please welcome my McDonald. Oh, thank you very much for having me. We need to get an applause like button yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you can press it on there. I'll get that fixed. Fixed. Probably on there. Mine. Thanks for coming on, yeah, baby. Thanks for having me. I'm excited oh, to be here. I am actually excited. We had a quick chat downstairs. A over a couple, a good, a good, a good <laughs> chat. So I'm super excited. I had for this. to stop that yeah. chat. I was like, "Stop the chat! This is podcast, this is podcast. gold." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Stop having the conversation now. Yeah. So for people that don't know you, who are you, <clears throat> and kind of what do you do now, and what you're about? Yeah. So um, I guess professionally, when when we first ever sort of met, um, I'm I I have a nutrition qualification, and that's kind of like what I did on, so or do do on social media, I say did, I haven't stopped it. Um, not not paying the bills with uh, ethical non monogamous <laughs> stuff. Yeah, <laughs> with poly- don't, don't pay just yet. Yeah, yeah. Just not yet. paying me to be here, guys. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, so, yeah, a, a nutrition qualification. I've, I've been a nutritionist for 20 plus years now. And uh, so we, we've got like a really global audience in terms of what we do in terms of helping people to, well, we actually qualify the people to go out and help people with the nutrition stuff. Olivia, <laughs> man, I'm so sorry. There's always one person, isn't there? I, I never to... have my phone on. <laughs> That's so funny. Sorry, guys. Turn on silent. <laughs> um, yeah, and then I, I guess I, I I've got quite a, a, a moderate sized following, but a very engaged following, and uh, I, I kind of put the feelers out about maybe starting a new account, and I was like, no snowflakes, and everyone knows I like. <laughs> innuendos and jokes and whatever but I don't think they realize the extent of it but I you know the first day I just put it on my story it was like a thousand follow requests and I was like wow I was like oh people are and I did put like oh it's going to be about sex positivity um like evidence-based sex education ethical non-monogamy some other uh, some other stuff and um I didn't realize how and like the engagement people maybe not interested in this but when your account grows your engagement Instagram kills it a bit, but uh, to the extent of, I might get 1%, 2%, 10% engagement. My engagement on my new account is 50 to 75% on every single, like it's it's astronomical. I'm like, I need to start a new (laughs) business with this sort of thing. It's just, and it's just a hobby. But, so uh, so you own a nutritional company <clears throat> and then you decided to come out as e and and tell the world about it pretty much. But if we go all the way back, yeah. all the way back, because this is one thing that really, really interested me mm. on, on how you grew up mm. and where you are today. Really, it yeah. shouldn't add up no. in that sense. No. So you growing up, um, I understand you was brought up in a, sh- a strict Catholic family, right? Well, uh, I think, I guess it would be termed Protestant, uh, but just religious, yeah. Christian whatever reading the bible yeah family yeah and kind of growing up what were you taught about like sex and yeah so it's the the very typical message of um i think i also relate it to i think even people maybe it's a british thing or i don't i don't know but even just society in general you guys will have experienced this more than anyone but there's a lot of shame about sex and even even not ethical non-monogamy or open relationships or anything like that even just sex in general is a bit of a taboo subject yeah. and and if you if you see that mum like one of my members of staff when she was a kid like her friend's mum was the one who took her to get her contraceptive pill or talked to her about any of these things mm. because she couldn't talk about it with her own parents and i think there's a lot of shame so you know it was like no sex outside marriage it's very like there's lots of people like school shouldn't be doing the sex education we as the parents should and then they don't because they're so repressed and vanilla. Yeah. Because and... nobody ever just wants to talk about <clears throat> sex at all. No. It's very. I think it's a very British thing as well. Yeah, agree. Um, because <laughs> I think in different countries, a lot of people are very open with it. But yeah, Britain yeah. and sex is just a big, like, massive taboo. And we, nobody do, we don't actually normally talk about, about kids it. on this podcast, but it's the yeah. right reason to talk about yeah, it now. Yeah. So um, our eldest is getting to that stage now. We're yeah. learning about sex in schools. And I can really only relate to majority of the population out there because Liv was like, you need to have this conversation with him. And I was like, 
I'm fucking not. <laughs> like, I am. Really? I was like, like I, I, I just kept cringing. Yeah. I was just cringing. I'm just going, I can't. That's my baby boy. Like, I don't want to be yeah. talking about yeah. clapping cheeks with him. Do you know what I mean? Like, I can't. <laughs> like, not I just, not how I rephrase it. But, you know, yeah, I'm just talking yeah. about sex and stuff. And I think yeah. that's your job, Olivia, but isn't it? It's You're so open about anything and everything. Yeah. And you yeah. talk to the world about sex and sex positivity. Kid, but he it? can't yeah. even talk to his kid about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, what point? of you kind of growing up did you turn around and go wait a minute something's not right here to be honest it's like <clears throat> it's probably always been I've always known that I was maybe a sexual being because it's, it's I think where they draw the line you know typical religious uh, teaching maybe is so low that most people are probably above that but I feel like I'm a very sexual being even maybe for someone who's not religious or not um, or even in the lifestyle like it, you know as a human being um, I sort of say it like sex is just is like a hobby for me and I, and I don't know how you guys feel about it but it's not just oh sex is a really important part of relationships I'm like no I have relationship sex and then it's like you know when you go out hiking or riding a bike or playing football I'm like I'm having sex mm. and, like, and talking about it. and it's just like it's a general discussion like let's let's talk about the footy I'm like let's talk about dub some dynamics you know also, or <laughs> it's like clapping it's cheese, it's yeah. like clapping cheese but it's like... she asked me that the other day so um we're gonna do a youtube documentary and she was like so any hobbies um <laughs> what can we like kind of like vi like do like can we see something of you doing a hobby together maybe cooking <laughs> maybe going on a hike and i'm like it's sex. Yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's a it's lifestyle. Money, yeah. It's yeah, it's talking time. about sex. It's work. Yeah. That's our hobby. That's everything around the lifestyle is purely yeah. our hobby, and we don't and have anything else. No. When you're into it, there's so much more to discuss. Like you're not just t talking about P and V sex. Like it's like when, because it's and when you're open, like if you're super open about it, you can have such open conversations. Like downstairs over a cup of tea, like the stuff that was discussed, you wouldn't talk about that with normie no. or vanilla people but it's just like it's so normal to it's not embarrassing there's nothing shameful about your different maybe kinks or things you're into it's just normal so it can fill up a lot more of your life yeah i feel so, like religion as well it's kind of like there's people follow religion and i, I said to you downstairs mm. we have people constantly telling us that we're going to burn in hell and that you know yeah. we're going to be faced judgment one day but I remember having a conversation with you mm. and you were saying, you know, most people that you've come across that are religious do swing or they'll do something like have a wank, but then they'll go to church and be like, pray, ask for forgiveness, and then it's all done and dusted under the carpet and then yeah. carry on and then just repeat and do it ourselves instead of yeah. just going, do you know what? We are sexual human beings. This is how we're wired. Mm. It, it's so shameful. I even the problem is, is there's so much shame. Even once it's allowed, i.e., inside marriage, loads of people like on Instagram. I follow the Christian educator, you know, an account that's called something like that, and it's literally to try and get people. You're married now. You're allowed to do this, but they still see it as this like dirty act. Like that's how much stigma there is around it. That's created by religion or <coughs> churches or whatever. So, um, like I have. Yeah, lots of followers who are kind of like, oh, we're Christians, but we also swing. We keep it secret. And I get that some people need to keep it secret because of their work. And I think that's BS. Mm -hmm. like, like the fact that you can't be a teacher and be a swinger. Like they don't cross paths. Like you can't be a nurse and say that you're going to a sex club. Like there's, they're totally irrelevant in terms of your job. But people lose their jobs and get outed and, you know, coming out as uh, lesbian or gay or whatever. It's like you're going to lose your job as a teacher. Like... That's a protective characteristic, but the people are getting outed. I've got an idea. Why don't we create our own religion? <laughs> I'm gonna, yeah, I'm already... Are you doing it? <laughs> yeah. Are you doing it? Yeah. Right. Still my idea. No, 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 I'm just saying we we could create a religion it's, where yeah. it's kind of like, hey, we believe in having threesomes, foursome, morsums. Mm. And this is what I believe. You, yeah. you put in the religion category. Get you are protected. You're protected, protected. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah, protected. Yeah. but normally you're not protected. Yeah. And it's like this is what I always say: is if I was a single Pringle and I was going out and meeting different people yeah. on a weekend, or that'd be okay, mm. and I wouldn't lose my job because of that. Mm. But because I'm married and we do it together and it's consensual between each other, that's then I'm going to maybe lose my yeah. job. It's unbelievable. Yeah, it just it makes no sense. And it just comes from P 
people who are repressed can't talk about these things. And that repression as well, it creates the secrecy that you mentioned. People then are doing it behind closed doors and they can't talk about whatever their, their kink is. And, and like there are major, it's, everyone's aware of it, no one talks about it, but there are major issues within the Catholic Church that people know about and they're not talking about it and it's kind of put on the rug because a lot of what they're teaching is very unnatural as a human being. Like we are sexual human beings. So people going like, I'm gonna abstain forever. I'm abstinent. It's like, that's not natural. That's not normal. That's no. going to mess with someone. Yeah. And it does. We, so We were yeah. saying downstairs as well, what were it, um, Jesus' disciples had, who were it Moses that had like four to seven wives or something like that? And mm. then you top that with who? King David had something like 700 wives and 300 concubines, so essentially prostitutes, that he was ordained by God to be, to be allowed to have. It's like right there, black and white in the Bible. So God allows yeah. you to bang as many chicks as you want. Yeah, he's pro OnlyFans. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're going to heaven, baby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, we got we're blue ticket to heaven. <laughs> Easy. Easy. Yeah, yeah, so so you uh, obviously own a nutritional company mm. and again, speaking down we should have brought this up, we shouldn't have spoken about it downstairs because the it, conversation was just flowing. Like, yeah. Um you brought up a point of nutrition and libido, right? And kind of mm. how you know sexual active you are and how that can mix together. As the mastermind of nutrition <laughs> and all that sort of good stuff, yeah. can you give us some advice in terms of what do I need to eat and drink to keep a rocking hard on constant? <laughs> mm. It's so that is so interesting. Like <laughs> there are, I don't know if you see that there's like an ex porn star who's doing quite well on Instagram at the minute. You know the one, and uh, he's got these things. He's like the night before you have this protein shake, you have two egg whites, you have this, and it's like at, he's. I think he calls it the boner shake, and it's like it's complete rubbish. And um, the, the, the key things, one of the big things, like hydration, I, I call it the most boring area. I know like you love your hydration, but unfortunately you're not getting, <laughs> what, do they, what do they call it? Lady bonus. Lady <laughs> bonus. <laughs> Does hydration help a lady bonus? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But like hydration is this massive one. There, there, unfortunately there's no major nutritional things in terms of like, it, it, more it's like your overall health and fitness. So when people say to me like, I don't like exercise particularly. And they're like, oh, why do you go to the gym? And I'm like, literally, one, so I look a certain way naked, and two, for better erections, like lasting longer and those sorts of things. Because in terms of your blood flow, like vasodilation, like the, uh, so one of the things that certain substances do is vasoconstriction, so which causes erectile dysfunction. So you wanna be doing, have things that cause vasodilation. So things like your healthy foods, which, aren't sexy to say, but like your fruits and your vegetables. Is he, I even went through a thing of like beetroot is a big thing. I don't know if you have beet, beet juice. Have you seen this? People are like, oh, I have beet juice for um, running marathons, but it causes like basically the dilation of your blood vessels. So, so is people doing positive. London Marathon with add-ons no, drinking beet juice? Specific. <laughs> That's where you get to Viagra is sort of specific to that area. But even like Viagra, it causes vasodilation. So people get like block noses and stuff like that. Maybe headaches sometimes or side effects. But anything that does that in terms of your foods um, is dietary nitrates. If people want to Google it, di Google dietary nitrates, spinach, beetroot. Um, but then hydration is such a big factor. But but in general, it's like living a healthy lifestyle. Lots of people who struggle with it. Once you, if you if you you know you've been inactive, you maybe eaten a lot and gained weight over time. Like obesity related, it's called hypogonadism. Essentially, like lowers your testosterone, lowers your libido, like really bad for sexual function. But as soon as you get someone get more healthy, it's like oh my god, my sex drive gone insane. Um, like I was talking about PCOS polycystic ovarian syndrome lots of women suffer from it so again polycystic ovarian syndrome okay so it sits on the ovaries but it but it's a syndrome so it's also related to like androgen levels hormones and um lots of sort of not great side effects but again if you exercise and again in some individuals uh losing body fat losing body weight so going on a diet which i know we, we won't talk about today but if anyone wants to go and follow my Martin Nutrition Instagram account, that's where you get that stuff. Um, but it's suddenly, the it's like 56% of individuals with PCOS have lowered sex drives. And you lose that weight, you eat healthy, and sex drive starts to come back. So I got these DMs from people going, I've got PCOS, and my sex drive's through the roof. And I literally am like, 
I've looked at your Instagram profile. You go to the gym ten times a day. Yeah. You're super lean. Like, of course you're horny all the time. Yeah. Like, you're the pinnacle of health. Is there yeah. anything please in Please don't. I'm gonna say, please don't use our gym membership. You're horny all the time, <laughs> yeah. and you don't go to the gym. Jesus yeah, Christ! I will help me the now. Dumbbells <laughs> is just yeah. I was like, why is he asking this? I was like, you've got no issues. No, I'm, I'm, this I'm, is I'm you guys. I, I'm okay. I'm okay with that. But I think, yeah. is it like in terms of like, so a big topic that we're kind of getting around. At the moment is like women getting um fresh and kind of you know mm. after using condoms and having mm. sex and all that sort of stuff is there anything that women can do nutritionally to kind of combat that yeah that's a tricky one so um yeah i there's lots of stuff with uh probiotics coming out and so there are you know female specific probiotics um and you know they're like good good bacteria it's it's still an early area of research. We don't really know. Like I'm very much like I've got a friend. She's really struggling with thrush, and and uh, she's like she's uh, qualified in lots of physiology and stuff. And she's like, I know the the evidence is really early and subjective, but I'm just desperate. And I'm like, oh, a hundred percent, do it, try it. Um, it's it's normally like, I mean, hygiene makes it sound a bit harsh, but it's even you know, using the wrong washing products. It's just like using mm. water, self-cleaning, that sort of stuff. So it's, but one thing I, I've got this uh, ENM newbies group and we're, we're having like, we've got an Airbnb, there's a group of us going. And that, this is something I typically do. I did it for my birthday. Bacterial vaginosis is another thing that, that can happen. And there's lots of stigma about those things. So I want to talk about them, even testing. I know like you guys have posted about STI testing and I think that's brilliant. Like it's not, a sexually transmitted virus, it's the same as getting a cold. You know how shame, I don't know if you ever got COVID, but when people got it, it was like, they're ashamed. Yeah. But it's the, no one's ever been ashamed of just getting influenza. Uh, yeah, yeah. Do you know what? It, I, I've been saying this for quite a while, especially, mm. even with STIs as well. Yeah. Um, I think <clears throat> the stigma behind it of like, you catch chlamydia, it's like, oh. But then again, it's kind of, you know, there is ways to prevent it. Like, there's ways to prevent, like, not getting the flu of like yeah. actually not fucking leaving your house but still <laughs> you know even if you do catch something it shouldn't yeah. be treated of like oh my god no, you're, you're dirty, dirty. it's but just it something all comes that from happens. the religious stigma of like yeah. you're dirty because what it tells you is that person had sex yeah because if i've got a cold or something it means well you were around someone and you got some of their saliva in your mouth like if you kissed someone but sti because it's transmitted in that specific way it's like the only dirty thing about it is if you think sex is dirty yeah. Like, yeah. it's not, I had a virus, I didn't know, like, we could be, we could have the cold virus right now and we would be asymptomatic, you can still pass it on, mm. but it's just all comes from the shame, stigma thing that we have as British people or whatever, people in an era that's, religion has just informed so much of so many policies, so many ways societies run, and yeah, I want to sort of be against that. And what I was saying about the, the bacterial vaginosis is, a lot of that, the way you fix that is through pH, like vaginal pH and whatever. And again, partners, P and V sex, if you can even have different pHs and it doesn't. And over time, by sharing uh, like the bacteria on your skin, like your microbiota, um, you can kind of align yourselves. But if you're going with a different partner. So I actually have this message that I send out of like, look, this sounds a bit weird. But if we're all going to be having sex and like everyone was getting their testing done. But I'm like, something I found is if everyone basically uses a bacterial vaginosis gel. And again, you, you just put it inside you and, and at night, a bit like a pessary, but it's a gel for a few days before. Any kind of thrush, itchiness, these sorts of things, which you're not transmitting an STI, but it's just your body, the bacteria is mixing. We've never had issues after a group play event when okay. using that pH balancing thing. And then someone, one of my subs, said to me, only you could make this. <laughs> like, it's I'm like just talking like... about this. It's like this group chat. It's like all sexiness. Yeah, and then yeah, he's yeah, like, yeah. just FYI, guys, <laughs> yeah. make, sure you, yeah. make yeah. sure you gel up. <laughs> I, I basically said, if any of you want extra brownie points, send me a video of you putting it in. <laughs> oh! <laughs> That, it's that, just like, that's just a new fetish in a long time. <laughs> yeah. 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 Just women with big plunges going, oh, shit. That's it. Turkey based. Turkey but based it's them, definitely yeah. something that needs to be talked about. Yeah. And I think like we had a chat about this of single people who mm. are like meeting other people. They only get tested or don't use protection at all if something is wrong. 
And mm. I'm just like, you just need to get tested just in dre- general yeah. anyway. Why do you always we, get tested when there's something wrong? Oh, it's burning evidence. down there. Yeah. Let's go get tested. Absolutely. Just get tested all the time. If you're sexually active, mm. not using protection, go get tested. But I think it's all yeah. about being responsible as well. So like recently, Livy's kind of found out that she's allergic to latex condoms. Mm. Um, but we've got a really close group of friends. Um, and we turned around and said, look, end of the day, we are all adults here. If everyone gets thoroughly tested, yeah. what is the harm of kind of going without? Yeah. And now wow. using the BB gel <laughs> a couple yeah. of days before. Amazing. Top tip. Yeah. Top tip. Yeah, you're welcome. That's you're it. Welcome. You're welcome. That's <laughs> it. Can we get some branded Swing Hub BB gel, please? <laughs> yeah. on the website, the fucking sales are going to go through the yeah. roof. Yeah. What What you were saying there actually is, is evidence based. There's There's good research on this in terms of um, people typically go, "Oh, you're swing." Oh good luck with your viruses or whatever. Yeah. It's, there's no increased level of, um, of STI occurrence in people with open relationships, poly ENM, than regular individuals, but there's a statistically significantly higher level of testing in those individuals. Yeah. So it's just like, well, I've got 10 times more partners than this person and we've got, and I've got the same or less because I'm testing and not spreading it. Mm-hmm. Because people in this lifestyle are so much more wary and and are just because it's the done thing to test. Whereas there's this shame outside of these circles of like, oh well I shouldn't have to go, I'm not I don't have any symptoms, but it's like you had unprotected sex with someone. Yeah. Like just go get tested. Sometimes um, symptoms catch up as well. So that's Exactly, yeah. But going back to your point there, it's kinda of like you said, yeah, we do have more play partners, but it's also the same concept of a person shaking one person's hand to <coughs> twenty people's hands. You know, it's kind of and if you test in between, you're more likely to just be on the safe side. Yeah. So you're not gonna catch the flu. <laughs> <laughs> but I wanted to um, ask you so from you building up your company, your nutritional company, mm. at what point did you turn around and go, fuck this, do you know what? I'm going to tell everybody that I am E&M and I am Polly or, you know, where it is that you are. What triggered that for you? Ah, <sighs> good question. Um, so I, there's lots of stuff I, so on my main account, I will talk about nutrition, but I'm also a very open authentic individual in terms of like I don't whether this is the way I was brought up or what I don't really tend to care what other people think so I'm very happy to be like oh I cried oh I did this I'm having a good day I'm having a bad day like lots of people post highlight stuff um this this is me failing as a parent this is me (coughs) succeeding whatever but there was there's also a thing of I have all these other views where I'm maybe not an expert or don't have loads of pers- but I have opinions that I want to talk about. I like educating. I read lots of research. Like I read loads of research around sex because it is a hobby. And you know I've got real interests in in I, I I've had a couple of partners and I always get jokes about this. But there's something called anorgasmia, which is basically what women, is it? women who have never had an orgasm ever. Never. Ever. Right? And it blows your mind, right? Wait a minute. That's Stand so Wait a minute. Sad. Mind, mind, mind. Oh my minute. God. Wait yeah. a minute. And I agree with this because the amount of people that talk to me at work when they find out about me being in the lifestyle, there's so many people that have never owned sex toys, never owned like yeah. anything, yeah. lingerie, like anything. And they're mm. in their 50s, 60s. Mm. And they've Tell never had a woman that you were speaking, the 50 year old woman. Mm hmm. No, 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 who, because when I make that joke, people are like, oh, you've had partners who couldn't come. Well, you can't be very good at what you do. And I'm like, I'm excellent at what I do. Mm. Uh, I don't care. You can say what you want. But these are individuals who can't come on their own through masturbation, who never in their whole life. And it's like, so so basically, I, I, what's weird is this partner who was like that had the highest sex drive of, like, I can't be woken up in the middle of the night, like, and just someone just jump on top of me. I'm like, I'm literally asleep. <laughs> Someone like that's that. That's just yeah. like me. <laughs> <laughs> Which is really funny, man, because I have... And I don't know what it is if it's yeah. a, a condition that I've got. Yeah. I will take Olivia's panties off through the middle of the night and try it on and try basically you slip awa- it in. Are you awake when you do that? No, no so this asleep. is a thing. Yeah, I did... 
Oh, oh my goodness! <laughs> yeah! yeah! He's mad, isn't he? He's mad. So with she Olivia... She was like, are you awake when you did this? You were like deep tongue kissing me. I was like, when? She was yeah. like... So he's woke up while I'm riding him. I'm on top of him. He's oh woke up and gone, oh, oh. Oh, Get off me! Oh, no, you're like... <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is the best to remember, Help. but you're not Megan Fox. Yeah. <laughs> this is literally constant. It is constant. He's had to sleep on it's the sofa. Weird, Yesterday, it? he slept on the sofa because he's had a snip, snip, snip. Yeah. Yesterday, he slept on the sofa because forget. I went on a hot wife date yesterday and he was like, I'm not coming to bed. I feel all right to come to bed, but I feel like I'm not going to come to bed because I feel like I'm going to try and have sex with you. <sighs> <laughs> you have to sleep on the couch yourself, regulate your sleep it's, sexing. It's... Most people sleepwalk, some of us sleep. Sleep fuck. We do though, and it's kind of like I'm fingering it, and I always get the mm, mm, big nudge, yeah. and that wakes me up, and I'm like, do you mind? I'm trying to sleep here. <laughs> 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 it's so weird that, that, like, literally in bed, she was like, do you remember this? I was like, no, when, what? This didn't, wasn't that the day before yesterday? No, the, you basically must have been acting that out again. She was like, you then rolled over and, like, put my hand there. And then I went, I said to you, oh, do you want me to suck you? And then you fell asleep. You, or, like, you... <laughs> Because I don't, I was asleep. We need to find oh, out the psychology yeah. behind this. Like, we need to do some I research. would do the sleep studies on this. this yeah. Is... The sleep studies. Yeah. See how many people actually do it's this so in the sleep. Crazy. Yeah. I think there was one time I actually went down on you, started eating oh, your pussy, but then fell sleep. asleep down there. Yeah. And Olivia's like, yeah. kind of like with her legs like, spread and I'm just fast yeah. asleep down there. And you don't even remember getting down there. Well, it's what? kind of like, it's, I wake in myself, it's like a half and half. So I start off and I am asleep and then I kind of wake myself up yeah. and I'm like, oh, wait a minute, it, I'm, I know what yeah, I'm doing. Yeah. Then I just turn back over. But like before, you know, I said to Olivia, she's like, will you stop waking me up? I'm like, why don't you just put out then? Like, why don't you just <laughs> put out? And this one time she actually did and she was proper like horsey riding me on yeah. top. And I remember just waking up and I just see Olivia and like, you know what I mean? You get that adrenaline rush you don't know what's going on. <gasps> but when you hear a loud bang, you're yeah, asleep yeah. and you're like, oh my God, what was that? It was like that and I was like, whoa. That's so funny. And she was like, you awake? I was like, yeah. I but I will ask him, when I got on top of him, I'm yeah. like, you're definitely awake, aren't you? Riding him. He's like, yeah, I'm awake, I'm awake. And he wasn't. That's insane. One, one of my stuff has, it. He I posted on my Instagram loads of times, he has a uh, sleep app that like records it because he sleep talks in his sleep. Like he, the most crazy stories of what he does in his sleep to the point where his partner will like ask him maths questions and he can answer them in his sleep. But then she asks him a really hard one and he, so he'll be, she will like 11 times 11, he'll like 100 times, and then she'll go like 68 times 525 and he goes, and just falls asleep. Cause like it just sort of breaks wow. or something. But he'll like get up and like start rearranging. Like he took, emptied all of his drawers. Like sleepwalking and stuff is crazy. But I guess when you're a horny person, you just sleep fuck. Yeah, we and it's do. it's like if um if I have gone on a hot wife date or if we haven't had sex that night because we have mm. sex quite regular or if we don't have yeah. sex that night or <clears> through <throat> the day and it's like being a a one day apart, it's kind of like I do get pestered. Yeah, yeah. All your subconscious is just like just oh, no matter it's if the it's time. an emotional thing as well. If it's kind of like I've not seen, you've had a hot wife date and I've got that mm, running through my belly mm. and it's like <laughs> I just. I get you in my sleep, that's all. Just get you, just get you yeah, whenever. Yeah. So let's, um, obviously I want to move on to a subject, Martin, about... Um... I didn't actually answer the question. Yeah, you, do you know what? didn't, didn't answer. Sorry, I'm really we're, bad. We're, do you know what I said to you? All three of us are Do you know what I said to you downstairs? We'll get into a subject and we just yeah. drift off into yeah. something. Yeah. And that's why we don't the, find it. It's just a conversation, yeah, baby. good. That's it. The answer is I don't really know why I changed this, in, uh, why I decided to open up, but I wanted to talk about these other subjects which aren't relevant to the big account at all. Things like men's rights, feminism, philosophy, stoicism, like ways to live life, ways to be happy all the time, even through bad times. Like no one wants, no one cares about that on my other account. But then there's also, obviously this huge other area in my life I didn't want to start going and orgasmia, this, that and the other. Mm. So um, I, I started it and it was never be supposed to be what it is now because I started it and then I did a question box and every single question it was about sex, polyamory, ethical non-monogamy, all these things. And then just people like asking for relationship advice. I'm like, I'm not a counselor or therapist. Like I'll give you my wisdom. I think I'll give good advice. Maybe don't always take it myself, but um, that's that's the answer to your question. I don't know what point it was, but it was a case of, I want to live authentically and I want people to know these things. It's a big part of my life. So if people are not going to be snowflakes and be judgy and Karens, yeah. you can hop over to this other account, but I'm not going to post it on my main one. Have you had people that are quite religious attack you for that as well? 
honestly, since I since you've come out and gone, I can't believe you've done this, or you know, no. you can, you're sinning and all that sort of stuff. I think, <clears throat> I think people tend to be too scared. Like even the nutrition world. Like I will just explain why you're a moron if you say stuff like that. Like, mm. like I'll debate the theology of how you know. God's pro only fans, like, because half of them are just being judgmental people. Yeah. Like, it's irrelevant of their religion. You're not supposed to judge people. That's God's job. But and, and so then I'll explain that to them, and then they're just like, oh, well, I'm unfollowing you. And I'm like, well, you probably should have done that. Yeah. <laughs> like, you're I on my that. page. Yeah. I love that. That's a good comeback. Like, it's not your job to judge me. It's God's job. Mm-hmm. If, you, you if you believe it's the answer, so it does yeah, yeah. end it though, uh, that, it? That's a bit like what we do. We literally just give them love, don't we? But like, we're that's really good. sorry that you feel this way. Oh, that's good. But we yeah. just wish you all the best. We, kind of thing. Do you know Why what? can't Christians be more like that? That's yeah. that. Yeah, we a lot of them are. But yeah. yeah, we adopted that, didn't we? When people leave us really nasty that's comments, nice. and you know, we'll leave us. We'll check out the profile, and be like, hey, do you know what? You look like a really nice guy, and probably you don't feel right at the moment. Just let you know that, yeah. you know, I hope you get better and you do you and I love you pretty much. M- Some people don't know how to respond. Proje- no, yeah, you just sort of kill them with what kindness. What do you do? Because yeah. you don't get your tax and back for them to come to her back. It's <laughs> just good. like, oh my God, she's killing me with kindness. Yeah. I want to fuck her. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the other thing. They're also projecting of just like, how can you live so authentic? How can you just be yourself? Like, oh, I have to like hide in my bedroom and just wank like that. And, yeah. it's like, and you're just doing it. Yeah. But I was like I was saying downstairs, like it does take people like us to come out and go, hey, this is mm. who we are and this mm. is what we do. And realizing that we are wired to have sex. We are wired, mm. you know, as men, like we are wired to mm. spread the seed, right? Mm. That's what it is. Like <laughs> let's face it, you know, it is. Um and women, you know, you're just wired to be free, especially you. <laughs> you know, so. <laughs> But as, soon, as soon as I think, you know, like generations are changing and as soon as the old mm-hmm. dinosaurs die off and you've got a new younger generation coming up, you know, we might see that pivot of people going, yeah, it's it's pretty cool to have, yeah. a, have a threesome or, you know, sleep with different partners. Yeah, I it's definitely, um, I think it just in terms of surveys being done that poly e m world open relationships is growing in, in on these sort of like census type surveys. It's like what I think there's a saying something like, um, what one generation um, allows or something, the next generation embraces. So it's this whole thing of like, if you don't want stuff to change, you can't even just let people get away with it because the next generation will embrace it. And I think that's what's happening. People are starting to embrace relationship anarchy, just like setting relationships up in an ethical way. That's the key thing that people don't get. It's like, if everyone is of agreement and on board, you're not hurting anyone else, just let people live their lives the way they want to. I watched an Instagram video the other day and it was about a woman um, not... Basically, a guy posted a video on Instagram and it was about not having sex with his wife. Um, Even Siri agrees, that's it. (laughs) That's it. (laughs) I don't know if the microphone's picked that up. Um, And the comment section was like, oh, you're great when he goes out and cheats on you and it's kind of like, you know, all about like, he'll go find someone else and he should go out and find someone else if you're not, you know, basically giving him sex and that sort of stuff. But then, you know, you turn it over to like our content and people are like, oh my God, like you are cheating on each other. And it's like, no, we're we're not. Honestly, we're not. It's because we give each other like, you know, authorization to kind of do it. And this is what we enjoy. I feel like we're always going to be a constant battle with people that one thing can never be right. Yeah. You can't ever please please everyone. There'll always be people. The, the best way to be is just like this. No, you don't have. There's a there's a sort of stoic saying is like you have the the right to not have a, an opinion on something. Like you don't have to be a Karen. You don't have to see something. Just don't have an opinion. Just leave it and just live your life how you yeah. want to. If you don't like that, just unfollow. You yeah. don't have to comment. Just unfollow and move on with your life. But then there's people in life that. That is their be all and end all, and they just want to spread the negativity. Yeah. And I remember getting projecting. a DM from a woman, and it was probably the best comeback I've ever done in my life. <laughs> and this DM, honestly, it was like this long of how it's wrong. Um, I had a bit of Bible study in mm. there, and I opened it and I kind of just scanned through it, but I left her a um, a little comment. I was just saying, um, let's face it, no one's going to read all that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I was like, taking all that time uh, yeah, to write, all that a time to write and someone doesn't yeah. read it. That I was like, actually... let, let, let's be straight. I'm not gonna read all that. And then I think what she said. I think she told me to fucking kill myself after oh, that. God. But you know, it's 
Still, yeah. it's one of the things. But, but what I want to move on to, mm. because I've heard you're a bit freaky, Martin. <laughs> I've heard you're a bit of a dark horse and like you. Don't say that because I'm probably vanilla compared to. No, 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 no. So you talk a lot about like. Uh, <laughs> you talk a lot about like sub dom mm. relationships on yeah. your Instagram page mm. and stuff. Is that what you're into? What is it the things that really tickle your pickle and get yeah. you going? Um, it's not. It's something I guess I fell into. So I think initially I was. I wasn't like someone who I would identify as like a kinkster or like someone who would who use the term like BDSM or anything like that. Um, and I think they come with certain connotations. When you think BDSM, it's just like latex, leather, whips, chains, whatever. Mm. And like that's kind of not necessarily my vibe, unless someone's into it. Um, <laughs> I'm flexible, um, <laughs> but it's more just falling into the. Um, I was in in my first open relationship, and. <clears throat> um, as I went through that, it was like then meeting people on certain apps and, you know, the amazing Swing Hub app is helping support this you type of thing. You better recognise. Um, <laughs> meeting people on those apps who, who maybe were more advanced in, in what they were doing and had names for stuff. Like, I don't like when people are like, you're a dom. Like, I don't like being called a dom because you said a good thing downstairs. Yeah. of like, people think, just have this picture, what is a dom? When it's such a broad spectrum or yeah. it's a continuum of uh, and different I guess it's not even a continuum because it's not there to there it's like just different things people are into like um you know the sort of sadist doms that pair well with like a masochist sub who you know they just want to be beaten right, and they want to beat what's a, what's a sadist dom <laughs> sadist doms are like ones who get pleasure out of causing pain which oh. sounds kind of horrific but people who like spanking but like we're not talking sound like they should be in prison <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. Talking, it's, just it can... spanking is it it's no, the it's blood intense. drawing oh yeah like that's um yeah <laughs> i mean what people the... are into uh, this came into my head don't yuck someone else's yum uh, I don't know if you've heard that phrase before. Don't I yuck someone else's I fucking love that. Rather kink than, out, get that on the merch. Rather, rather yeah. than don't kink shame, don't yeah, yuck somebody's yum. Yeah. Kit so Kat, get that on the merch, please. Thank you. Yeah. We've talked about that. You can't steal it. All right. It's just, it's just when, when other people yeah. don't understand it. Yeah. Where you, you're you like, I, I genuinely don't understand the pain mm. the, to draw oh, I'm blood. Such a, I'm such a baby. Yeah. <laughs> but... Exactly, but somebody really enjoys yeah. that. Mm. And I think that's what that's where my progression has gone. Is like I get so much pleasure and so turned on out of someone else being turned on. So people have these requests, and it's like oh, I'm really into this, and I'm like, oh, I'm not really into that, but we'll try. It. Then when someone's eyes roll back in their head, or they're just like, and you're like, oh my god, this is so Maybe good. Maybe I might like yeah. this. And a little so bit. like, and and there's certain things that I might do with a certain partner or a sub that. Um, they're not necessarily with someone else. I wouldn't go. Do you want to do this? But with them, I'm so totally into it. But there's other things that someone's like, like, I always feel awkward because I'm still new to this, talking out loud about mm. it. In like, right, everyone's going to see this. But things like um, slapping. So it's like spanking is one thing. But I remember the first girl who asked me to slap her in the round the face, and I was like, no. I was like, <laughs> I was like one, I'll go to prison. Give them, give them little, little taps like that. Ooh, yeah. Like, yeah. Is this okay? And it was just like, is this okay? You know, like, you know, like the whole choking thing that you, it's just like choke, and then you're like, and they're like harder, and you're like, I'll kill you. And it's like harder. And you're like, okay. And yeah. it's like harder. You're like, it's, that trust in that whatever is like when someone asks me to slap them, I'm like, I don't know if you've seen the memes, but it's like a car and a wall and they're so close together. Like no one would punch. Yeah. And it goes, how how rough she likes it in the bedroom. Domestic bar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a fine line, yeah. isn't it? Well, it is. But it's like if everything's consensual and it's pre-discussed, like again, this whole dom thing, or oh, I like a dom, but then people just go, well, what does that mean to you? What yeah. do you like about it? You've can I just tell exactly. you my funny story? Yeah. Um, so me and Olivia get quite freaky in the bedroom. <laughs> really? um, we learn about kinks and uh, somebody was talking about breath play. I want to get onto the point of what I'm going to say, right? She was like, you know, like coming in the mouth oh, yeah, and all yeah, that sort yeah. of stuff. And that, that's like a really big kink. And me and yeah. Liv, like, we do that pretty much every night. Like, that's, <laughs> that's so, okay. so uh, like, that's we well, did get... Well, we, are we now in the kink scene? Yeah, we did get are. onto the, so like, funny. a bit of slapping, right? And a, a bit of whatnot. 
But do you remember that time we did it and it was like pitch black and you were feeling yeah. quite feisty? And I totally missed her face and clipped her oh, nose. Oh, no. <laughs> I clipped her oh, nose no. and nearly broke it. She was like, oh my God. Oh, <laughs> she was like, stop. Yellow, yellow. <laughs> that's a, that's a common word. Yeah, 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 that's a safe word. Uh, and I was like, she was like, you just fucking whack me in the nose. <laughs> oh, no. Don't do slapping in the dark, yeah. guys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I bought some night vision goggles now. just all right. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so yeah, in terms of in terms of that wor- world, um, we got a, a guest you're, on you're the good show. Kitty cat. I think there's a camera out. Oh, is a that's Martin's as well. Okay. What is it stopped? Is it stopped? It might well be it. Guys, we'll be right back in two minutes. Play some elevator music. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Is that middle one, right? With the light. I think it's the light. The light. Oh, okay. What they heat. Yeah, we are back live. Um, sorry for the <coughs> technical issues, guys. So you can we see seem that to be having any... loads of these okay. technical issues we, lately. We need some new cameras, I think. Do you think they've, proper... um, it's a, a year and they've gone... Yeah, it's just one of them things. I do apologise about it's that. Too much it's just, sexual energy just, in the room. It's too, too hot in here. Yeah, the sexual <laughs> energy around here is hot. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Um, what were we were talking about? Um, King YouTube being too yeah, he slapped the shell in your nose pretty much. Sort some, a BDSM contract or something. But then it's like that's what we were saying. How we, we've spoke about this before. How like you said the dom sub scenarios. It's such a massive umbrella, and yeah. I think like people just need to explain it a little bit more because mm. when somebody goes. I'm a submissive. I'm submissive, but I wouldn't be dragged around on a lead on my hands yeah. and knees. But that's also in the subcategory yeah. as well. Yeah, like so, I said, I'm dominant, but I wouldn't necessarily whip someone's ass till they bleed. But I just like taking control and all that good stuff. Mm. Such a wise spectrum. Yeah. Um, I noticed you're wearing something quite, quite fancy around here. Oh my, my, king katana. So I, I wore this because so, I get told off if I forget to wear this. Is that a whistle when see. you're in danger? Yeah. <laughs> so you avoid conflict. It still tastes. <laughs> it still tastes like Percy. <laughs> right, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What, what's this? What's oh, that? Hilarious. So it's. I can't remember what it's called, but it's a vibrator. You wear a vibrator on your neck. So yeah, it's more of a fashion statement, but I have used it. You know, like you go to a party, and you're there, and it's like if someone's really into because it's a really nice feeling. Look. Oh my god, mine. <laughs> so yeah, uh, it's it's just a nice, you know, like not for me. Have obviously. you ever pulled it out in the middle of the party and it's gone here? Come here. Well, I ha- I have actually. It was, I was at a mansion party and then I had it on and then I was with this girl and then we were talking about squirting earlier, and she, yeah, she was like, "Oh, you're the first person to make me come at this whole party." Was but I had this and it's just one of my partners was like I, I want that she tried to like take it home with her and I was like it's mine yeah, you're right. so just for <laughs> the, I need this because it's like the perfect frequency it, it, it is it? so and just just, just for the audio <laughs> listeners just for the audio <laughs> listeners um, so what Martin's actually wearing it looks like a four inch like massive construction uh, nail but it's um, it's quite blunt on the end quite shiny and it's it vibrates and you, he wears it around his neck. And you wear that all the time, right? No, 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 no. Do you use um, it on yourself? No. Well, you just did then. It was nice. But like nice nail this. <laughs> but, <laughs> a bit of a nipple play. Hey. Oh, but love, yeah, because like a lot of the time, so I don't come during like penetration. Mm. So I'm like a clit stimulation on yeah. ass. Um, mm. And it's kind of like if you had that at a club, like most nine out of ten times we go to a club or a party or something like that. Everybody's like, "Oh, did you come? Did you have a good time?" Yeah. I'm like, "I never come." Like, no. yeah. like that's just it's... a general like consensus of uh, I never come at like when we go play at an event. No, because nobody, nobody's there Takes with a the vibrator. Time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Where did it's you get a... that from? Gay G. A birthday present, <gasps> actually. Oh my god! No way. We we're down to one. Like well, these cameras. Two How seconds, you know? guys. This from sorry just online it was a birthday present i don't know where from but you should get them branded for sure branded can, you get, can you get the <laughs> can you get the vibrant things right guys we're going to wrap this up because we are having a few technical issues going on here but oh. um where can we find you on instagram um 